we finally know what Nintendo's next home console is all about. It's called the Switch, and it can be played at home or on the go. It's looking pretty cool. But you know what? Forget about all that, because the only thing that really matters is that Nintendo also announced a brand new Mario game, baby, and it's coming to the Switch. Okay, so maybe the Switch actually is pretty important in this. But there's a catch, and that's the fact that they only showed about 6 seconds or so of the game. And while it might look pretty familiar on the surface, it's when you start to dig a little deeper that you realize it's actually rather mysterious. So we tagged in the old analysis machine and put it to work right away to see what secrets Super Mario Switch might be hiding. So let's get right to it. Okay, so the extremely short gameplay sequence shows off two different scenes. One appears to take place in some kind of Mexican-like town, while the other takes place in some kind of desert temple-like area that looks a bit more like a standard Mario level. So let's go ahead and start here first since it's a more familiar scene of the two. And right off the bat, we can see the game is based around the typical running and jumping action that we all know and love. Heck, Mario even opens the scene by doing a long jump, which is nothing new of course, but this time he holds his arms out at the end, almost like he's a plane coming in for landing. Is this just a cute touch? Or could it maybe indicate a small speed boost after long jumping or something? Anyways, besides the long jump, we can see several other common Mario elements here, such as the nearby Bullet Bill launcher, which predictably fires Bullet Bills to try to hone in on Mario, as well as a bunch of coins. And then we have the three gold rings here, which if they function like the gold rings in 3D Land and 3D World, they might award Mario 5 coins for touching them. But how is Mario supposed to get to them in this case? I mean, they're floating above a gap filled with what might be quicksand, and the moving platform nearby appears to only move parallel to them. And we're also pretty dang sure that that distance is too far from the long jump through, so there has to be another method of grabbing those rings. Like, can Mario maybe lure the bullet bill through them instead? We're really not sure, but there is something mysterious happening nearby that might play a role, because if we look down here during Mario's long jump, we can see something appears to be burrowing up from underground, and although it is hard to see, it appears to go away just as quickly. Or at least the dirt that burrowed up from did. So we have no idea what's going on here. Did some kind of enemy emerge here or something, and maybe it plays a role in those rings? And while we're down here, if you look off into the distance, you can just barely see some kind of purple liquid a ways off. Unfortunately, we don't know what's going on with it either, but it definitely does stand out against the orange desert. At any rate, there's more here than just returning old stuff, as a floating heart here is new. So what's that about? Well, we're thinking Mario might be taking a page from Zelda's book, and hearts might be used to regain health instead of coins or power-ups. And surprisingly, this isn't actually the first time Mario's had to collect hearts for health, as they first appeared in Super Mario Bros. 2, then again, sort of, in Super Mario 64, where they could completely restore his health. Now in both of those cases, Mario had a health meter, so we can't help but wonder if that might be the case here too, replacing the power-up based system from 3D Land and 3D World. And if that's the case, then we wouldn't expect to see small Mario make a return either. Now besides the heart, the camera's unfortunately just a bit too low for us to get much of an idea of what else lies beyond the gap but we can still make out a few more things. Of course, we can see some cactuses here, which are probably hazards, and also match the desert theme, but we can also see three stacked coins that appear to be too high for Mario to reach. However, there does appear to be some kind of flower directly beneath them, so maybe it plays some kind of role in gaining those coins, like maybe Mario can bounce off it or something? Okay, and that pretty much covers it for this scene. Wait, did I hear you say something? Are you trying to tell me there's something else here that I haven't mentioned yet? Alright, I guess I'll finally address it. Yes, there does indeed appear to be frozen ice everywhere. Look, you can see it on the wall to the left, as well as the level's border to the right, and even dead ahead, encompassing some blocks. In fact, although it's hard to say for sure, it might even be blocking access to that heart. So what's going on here? I mean, one wouldn't expect to find ice in a desert, right? Now, of course, it could be some kind of crystal or something, but we'll stick with ice for now. Especially since it looks like you can see cold air surrounding it. Either way, it seems like it's going to be some kind of major barrier. So is Mario able to break through it in some way, like the crystals of Mario Galaxy? Or is it something that ties into our larger narrative? Well, we'll come back to that in just a bit. For now, let's turn our attention to the other scene, being this festive Mexican town during what might be the Day of the Dead. Here, we can see colorful buildings outfitted with all kinds of floral decorations, including this festive skull painted on the side of this building. Heck, even the sombrero-wearing citizens here appear to be dressed for the occasion as painted skeletons. Actually, slight correction, they might actually just straight up be skeletons. As you can see, this guy's head literally separates from his shoulders as he dances around while shaking maracas. Yeah, this is a pretty unique setting even by Mario standards. Now, you've probably already noticed the second citizen to the left, but did you catch that there are actually at least three more? One near the fountain in the middle of town, another just behind him, and a third they can just barely see right here. And based on the fact that they seem to be out just having a good time and don't appear to be going after Mario, we're pretty sure they're not enemies. 
Instead, they're almost certainly friendly, and we're betting you'll be able to talk to them, kinda like the Piantas from Mario Sunshine. But it seems like there's more to do here than just talk to citizens, including possibly entering buildings. Take a look at this one for instance. It has a painted sign that says Crazy Cap, with a hat as a logo. And based on how close it is to that door, we're pretty sure Mario will be able to head inside. But Crazy Cap, huh? Mario is kinda known for his red hat, right? So is it possible that you might be able to swap out Mario's hat for something else? Hey, we're just spitballing here. Anyways, besides that store, we can see another building in the back with what appears to be another door that you might be able to enter through. Of course, we all know what might be inside there. And by the way, did you notice a signpost and bench just outside of town? It kind of looks like a bus stop, doesn't it? Could that be how Mario got here? Real talk? Probably not, given that he appears to be entering town from a whole different direction. But maybe he can catch a ride on that bus to go elsewhere. That is, assuming a bus or something else even shows up. It could just be for decoration. And speaking of decorations, we had this umbrella here just in front of the Crazy Cap store. And it seems like it might be pretty important given that there are three purple arrows pointing down right at it. So can Mario maybe bounce off of it to reach the rooftops or something? Or if not, there's surely some other way up there based on the fact that the rooftops appear to be decorated with plants. And if we look over here, we can even see the sombrero of a fifth citizen. Now just below him, we can see some rugs draped over a railing. And of course, why would a railing be there unless it bordered a path that was meant to be walked on? And check this out. If we zoom way in, we can just barely see some kind of purple object moving behind the rugs on that very walkway. Now at first, we thought they might be purple coins, but then we remember the purple arrows by the umbrella, so we're pretty sure they're the same thing. And going off of that, we then notice that yet another purple arrow can just barely be seen on the rooftop of the building right here. So taken all together, we're pretty sure those purple arrows aren't part of a UI like they might seem at first. Instead, they appear to be collectibles, especially given how some of them appear to be out of the way. So what are they used for? Could they be a form of currency? Well, your guess is as good as ours. Anyways, moving on, you may have noticed that, like the temple, this town appears to be frozen over too. You can see it just outside town to the far right, as well as inside the town itself, even covering up the building here. The fountain ahead appears to be similarly frozen too. And on top of all that, you can even see ice at the corners of various buildings, and even little chunks of it in the ground. So what in the Mushroom Kingdom is going on here? We have no idea. But we can't help but wonder if that moon might be playing some part in this all. It is awfully close, isn't it? So between this frozen town and the frozen temple, it makes us wonder if ice might play a major role in this game. Now next up is the fact that we have to point out that when the scene begins, Mario is performing a triple jump. Now granted, this is nothing new for Mario, but it is something that's been missing from his latest 3D adventures, being 3D Land and 3D World. So could its return be hinting at an even larger moveset? So between that, as well as the potential health meter, could these be signs that the game might play closer to the more open and explorative gameplay of the older 3D Marios, like Mario 64 or Mario Galaxy? After all, this entire town does remind us a bit of Isle Delfino, what with the friendly citizens and colorful buildings. So what I'm getting at is, could this be a hub-like area from which you access other levels? Maybe, although this town does seem to be a bit on the small side, especially by comparison to be a true hub. I mean, the main street here appears to be pretty much it. Although it is possible there's more off screen that we just can't see. But there is one more really interesting detail here that might be related. Do you see that light shining off in the distance? It appears to be marking the location of something in that temple-like structure way off in the distance. Wait a second. Temple-like structure, huh? Where have I heard that before? Oh right, back when I was describing the other scene. And based on the similar colors and details of those temples, we have a feeling they are actually one and the same. And since the temple here appears to be pretty far off the ground, it now explains why the other scene appears to be similarly high up as well, which could mean the town is somewhere down here. So given that the two scenes appear to be directly connected, it suddenly makes this game appear far more expensive than it might have seemed at first, especially when compared to the most recent 3D games. I mean, navigating from this town to that temple seems to be no short distance. And the fact that a guiding light is required at all might reveal a lot more about the scope of this game. But how big is that scope exactly? Like, is this all just part of a single level? Or is it possible that this section is just part of an even larger level? Or maybe even world? After all, we don't see exactly where Mario came from, so could there be even more behind him? Or is this just the actual start of the level? It's impossible to say for sure, but at the very least, it might suggest to return to the more open and adventure style of the older games. Now as for that column of light, what exactly is that about? Well, our best guess is that it's marking the goal, or maybe a goal, like a star or something that Mario has to collect. Again, like Mario 64 or Galaxy. Now, if this truly is a return to a more free-roaming 3D game, then that might also imply that you'd have full control of the camera too. Unfortunately, while we do see the camera automatically track Mario, it doesn't appear to be under the player's control. But that doesn't mean it can't be. After all, we're pretty sure this camera angle wouldn't be one the game was sticky with. It's too low, and it's not even centered to the path. 
So yeah, what we're saying is we're pretty sure camera control is going to return in this game as well. Okay, we're almost done here, but there are a few final details I wanted to point out. First up is the fact that Mario leaves footprints in the sand. Yeah, it's a small touch, but I had to point it out. Next up, I have one more detail for you Sunshine fans. Now, I've already compared this town to Isle Dolfino, but there's something else here that reminded me of it. The power lines are run between buildings, which of course is reminiscent of the wires in Mario Sunshine. So is it possible that Mario might be able to use them to cross over gaps and even bounce off of them like before? We wouldn't be surprised. Although, the fact that the poles are yellow and there's a clear electric symbol on them might mean this could be a bad idea. Okay, now for these final two tidbits, we need to think a little outside of the box. The TV box, that is, because if we zoom out, we can see that the woman playing has a variety of amiibo nearby, including Yoshi, Bowser, Luigi, Peach, and Mario himself. Yeah, it's probably unrelated, but what if those amiibo actually are compatible with the game? And on a similar note, we can't help but wonder if when we see our pack upper switch to go play multiplayer with her friends, are they possibly playing the same Mario game together? As in, it might have multiplayer? I guess we'll find out soon enough. And with that, we're done covering everything we could dig up on Super Mario for the Nintendo Switch. But as always, let us know if we missed anything by posting in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more on Mario, the Switch, and other things gaming too.